Destruction in games is incredibly resource heavy. It puts a huge load on both your processor and graphic card. And for developers, it's not just about performance. Creating realistic destruction takes a lot of time and money. So how do they solve these problems? The easiest and most efficient method to add destruction in a game is baked simulation. You've probably seen this in Battlefield. This building collapse is a great example. Here's how it works. Developers take a building model, run a destruction simulation in 3D software, save the whole thing as a pre-made animation and then drop it into the game. Your computer just plays it back with some effects layered on top, which means it's not very demanding and work well even on less powerful systems. Yeah, it's visually stunning and doesn't overload your computer, but the downside is almost no interactivity. It's like watching a cutscene, but from different angles. No matter how you attack the structure, the collapse is always the same. For epic cinematic moments, it's a perfect, but as a part of gameplay, it only works a couple of times and then gets boring. If we want a more immersive experience, we need something different. And it brings us to control. Just look at these juicy and pleasing moments, which make your inner destroyer happy. All of this is possible thanks to procedural destruction. Environment reacts dynamically and looks pretty realistic. But the truth is, it's still partly pre-made. Developers make models with chunks and then explain to a computer what should happen when a player interacts with the model. What chunks should fall off how they are gonna fly apart, when the whole model should collapse, etc. It looks fun and realistic, but the most important, it adds immersion to the game. You can actually play with it, but it doesn't give you complete freedom. You can't destroy everything you want, only what developers allow you. So, is there a way to create an ultimate playground for those who want to destroy? Yeah, and it's called dynamic destruction. You could see the example of this in games like Retraction, Teardown and NG Beam. In order to create a world to be destroyed, you need not only to create every part of this world, you also need to program its behavior in detail. You can compare the volume of jobs to be done with creating a game engine. For example, to create a building, you need to start with the materials – bricks, metal, glass, wood and so on. Then you define how each of these materials behaves. Bricks break, metal bends, glass shatters. After that, you create models of various elements and assemble them into the building. So, to implement a destructible house or bridge in Red Fraction, the developers literally built a virtual house that behaves like a real one, down to every bin and support structure. As well as the developers of NG Beam constructed every bicycle piece by piece down to the screws and on top of that, they added soft body physics. Soft body physics adds an extra layer of complexity, but that's a topic for another video. 